Hi, my name is Jillian Minahan and I'm a firmware solutions architect at Memphal. In this video, I'm going to walk through how to get started with Memphal on a 9160, specifically the NRF 9160 Discovery Kit from Nordic. To get started, I'm going to walk through a couple prerequisites. First off, you'll need to configure a Zephyr workspace. I am currently using a sample app for uh, the NRF Connect SDK um, HTTP client. So I will be making the manifest repository for my application, the um, NRF Connect SDK. So this is my uh, workspace that I'm working with. Um, so this is already configured. I have already installed all of the Python requirements. So just make sure you have that set up first. Um, and then just for some context on what I will be using. So as I mentioned, I'm using the HTTPS client sample through NCS. Uh, to make sure that this works for uh, this test, I'm going to comment out um, this last part, which actually takes, uh, takes down the connection um, over LTE. And then I'm going to pop in a while one loop here so that we don't disconnect um, from the network and we just hang out in this um, while loop here. So I'm gonna do K sleep forever. Great, all right, I'm gonna save that. And then let's go ahead and get started um, with, I'm gonna discard some, cha discard some changes that I had previously um, so we can start from scratch. Um, so first I'm gonna go over to uh, the Memfault application and get a project set up. We're working with a 9160, so I'm gonna go ahead and select this NRF 91 on NCS. And I'm gonna make this project call Jillian NRF 91 quick start. All right, go ahead and create a project. And once that's done uh, creating the project, I'm going to navigate over to the setup project tab over here. And this will walk me through all of the steps that I need to do to get started. The first step here is creating a project. Your integration starts here. We've already done this. This is marked as complete. The next step is set up the SDK. We're going to enable Memfault's features locally on my device. OK, the first step is to enable Memfault uh, by adding some kconfig settings to the application. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this uh, snippet here, and I'm going to add it to my prj.conf file. So let's go ahead and do that. Grab the prj.conf, and I'm enabling Memfault. I'm going to go ahead and save that, and let's see what's next. I'm going to perform a full rebuild of the project. Great. Okay. So I'll go ahead and copy that in. And I actually know from using this sample before that in order to use the serial terminal, I need to disable um, the AT host library because it uses that terminal connection. Host library equals n. Great. Okay, so this is all I need to build this project. I'm um, gonna go ahead and press enter and get that building. Let's see what the next step is. It's gonna be flashing the board. So I'll go ahead and copy that and flash the board. And we can ignore this warning. This is just from me commenting out that section in the main function. Okay. Um, let me run that again. Okay. Uh, sometimes it gets in a bad state. I have to configure it to flash again. Okay, great. So we flashed, and I'm going to go ahead and see what's next. Connect a serial console and confirm that the shell command group is available by running mflt help. So let me copy that. I'm going to use um, TO as my uh, serial terminal program. And that's going to be USB modem. Let me select this first one. All right, great. So the Zephyr shell is coming through. And I'm going to go ahead and drop mflt help. Great. OK, so now we see that there's some commands uh, from Memfault that are coming through that I can access. OK, let's see what's next. Oh, that's it. I'm um, going to mark that as done. The next step is saying hello to Memfault. We're going to upload our first data to Memfault. Upload build Zephyr, zephyr.elf file to Memfault by navigating the software symbol files and clicking on upload symbol file. All right, let's do that. All right, let's select file here. Okay, it looks like I'm already where I need to be. And yep, again, that's under the build folder in my workspace. 
under Zephyr um, and then Zephyr.elf. Great. Okay, and I actually so software type and software version can be omitted because the upload symbol contains a build ID, and this one does, so um, I won't need to do anything there. Okay, that's uploading. Great. Um, we see our good new build ID here, and now I'm going to go back to <coughs> to see what's next. All right, verify your connectivity. Make sure the application is connecting to LTE after startup. Okay, so I just need to make sure that I'm actually connected. Um, so we actually do have the connection manager enabled. That was um, happening in that main loop, if you recall, here. So we're making sure that we're connected. Um, and I'll just reboot the system. I can actually do this through Memphal. Um, this is a little off the track, but I just want to make sure I show uh, we look like we see that uh, we're, we're bringing the network interface up. Um, network connect connectivity established, so I've confirmed um, in this step that I am indeed connected to network. Okay, um, let's see what's next. Once the board is connected, use Memphal post chunks to verify data can be successfully sent to Memphal. Okay, any errors will be shown in the console log. Okay, let's try that. Post chunks. Posting memfall data. Okay, so it says no errors mean that data was posted successfully. Check the reboot event in the sidebar, navigate to the processing log and look for the reboot event from post chunks. Okay. And let's see, try to refresh, see if any data comes through for us. Aha, looks like we got a reboot event. Great. Let's see what's next. Okay, it looks like that got checked off for us automatically uh, because we had some data come through the project and, and it looks like you recognized that. Awesome. Okay, let's do something next. In investigate a crash, trigger a crash, upload its data, and explore. Okay, trigger a crash using the Zephyr shell commands. Methyl test assert. Let's go ahead and run that. Okay, it looks like we got a usage fault. Attempt to execute undefined instruction. All right, we've got some register values coming through, um, an exec return value, and in our program counter. We reboot um, and reconnect to the network. Let's see what's next. Once the device reboots, upload the data again with the post chunks command. Okay, let's do that. And there it is. There's our success message. Navigate back to the processing log, confirm the core dump was received can take up for five minutes to appear. Okay, so we'll just hang out and wait for that to show up here. Um, refresh a couple times. Okay, great, so we see that we received a core dump and uh, we got another reboot event, which makes sense since we, we rebooted um, due to the crash. Okay, if I go back to investigate a crash, in the sidebar, navigate to the issues page and see the core dump once it processes, okay? Let's go to the core dump view here. Okay, great. Looks like we've got a core dump that came through here. We've got some threads. Um, oh, it looks like I can hover over each thread and see some information on the stack usage at the time of the crash. Uh, this was the running thread, um, and then we've got the state of the other threads as well. Cool. All right, let's see what's next. Okay, we can see all the details, which is what we did, and let's mark that as done. Okay, we're going to monitor the pleat now. Heartbeat metrics are collected by the mental SDK, currently at an hourly interval. So to, verif to verify that metrics are working, we'll trigger a heartbeat and upload its data. So I'm going to run MFLT test heartbeat and then MFLT post chunks to trigger and upload the heartbeat. So I got to trigger it first, uh, trigger collection of the heartbeat, and then I'm going to do post chunks uh, to upload the data that we just captured. Okay, I'm going to go back to the processing log and let's see what came through. And we'll, we'll give it a minute to come through for us. And we'll just verify, yep, we got that success message there, so we had no issues on the device side. All 
right there it is we received a metric report uh, specifically a heartbeat metric report let's see what's next um, in this step uh, okay great click on dashboards metrics and inspect the aggregated metric chart okay um, let's go ahead and do that Okay, great. It looks like I've got actually some, some data that came through for the timer task stack low watermark. Cool. So not only did I see the task uh, watermarks in the core dump, um, the percentage usage of the stacks, um, I also see that come through as a metric that I can observe um, outside of the, the crash context. Really neat. And I also got a measure of the number of CPU cycles for all of the tasks um, so I can get a sense of uh, what, my, what my CPU usage was. Me. All right, let's see what's next for monitoring the fleet. Okay, it looks like that's it. And we just see another tip that if we make sure the matching symbol file is uploaded or uploading the heartbeat data. Okay, so if um, I changed my firmware image at all, I'll need to upload a new a symbol file to match that image. Great. And then the next step is, uh, we just did that, is examining a device. Okay, so let's go to Fleet Devices and select the device recording in to view its device timeline. All right, I'm going to click on the sample in the timeline to inspect the uploaded heartbeat record and it should look like that. Okay, so we see a device that came through. Um, it's the NRF 9160DK, which is exactly what I'm working with. I'm going to go ahead and um, hover over here and it looks like I need to select um, all of these and I'm seeing, yeah, I'm seeing some data come through which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I see a sync success, some timer task usage um, data that we saw charted as well, um, the, both the CPU usage and the, and the stack uh, free currently. Neat, okay, great. And what I can do next um, as part of this view is I'm gonna look at the traces tab and the reboots tab as well. So let's go do that. Um, before we finish out the quick start. So I see in the traces tab that I got a trace reported. This was the assert that we triggered earlier. And then in the reboot tab, I had a user reset, which was me reflashing the board. And then we had um, a assert. Oh, actually, I think this user reset was me rebooting the device manually, um, that memfault test reboot and then uh, the assert that came through, uh, which was an unexpected reboot. Really cool. Great, um, let's go back and make sure we finished everything. We'll mark it as done. Uh, great, uh, looks like we are all done with the quick start. Uh, hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and please let us know if you have any questions.